and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, the Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her who is in travail together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water and a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands afar off. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd keeps his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall be like a watered garden, and they shall languish no more. Then shall the maidens rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will feast the soul of the priests with abundance, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thus Pharaoh has found her house, and the swallow by 
A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely bestowed on us and the beloved. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what, it, what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance of the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for you shall, from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed by their own country by another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, Take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there till I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night, and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, was in a furious rage. And he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all the region who were two years old or under according to the time which he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled, because they were no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. 
And he arose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus reigned over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By way of announcements, you'll notice Annie, you'll notice Annie and I are unmasked this evening and are singing many things, uh, perhaps too much, certainly more singing than we're accustomed to doing in public liturgies. Uh, Susan is under the weather. Um, so please pray for her quick recovery. And I uh, told Father Brian, our curate, to uh, stay home this evening to take a well-deserved break. So that's why uh, there are only two of us and why we are singing a great deal more than we normally do. Uh, the inability to sing over the last several months has been felt keenly, so I hope you'll forgive us uh, taking that, uh, that particular liberty. Um, also, one additional um, announcement and one change to the announcements in your bulletin, uh, we will not be having a uh, Wednesday evening service streamed from Trinity this Wednesday uh, because uh, there's an ordination in the Diocese of Ohio. Uh, the Reverend Chris Decatur and the Reverend Noah Sutterish both transitional deacons will be ordained to the priesthood Wednesday evening. I would encourage you to tune in to uh, the Diocese of Ohio's Facebook page to join in that celebration. Perhaps the most difficult thing for many of us to do is to take flight when the situation calls for it. This has not always been so. Though we are wonderfully created in the image of God, though we are indeed moral creatures unlike anything else under the sun, we are human beings still, at least in a sense, animals. And anyone who studied animal behavior will have heard of the fight or flight mechanism. Certainly earlier in the developmental history of uh, our human race, we were, like any other animal, largely controlled by reflexes, which would determine if a fight, perhaps with a mastodon or a saber-toothed tiger or a person from another tribe, was winnable, and if it wasn't, our reflexes would set us to flight. Over the millennia, with the development of civilization, this natural response came to be suppressed and to be cast fundamentally as cowardice. Run away is not a very inspiring battle cry unless you are Monty Python's version of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Retreat is an embarrassment. It's to be avoided at all costs for the sake of honor, or something like that. Thus we might find the response of the Holy Family in this morning's Gospel to be initially less than inspiring. The machismo of our modern sensibilities might not align with Joseph's response to the threat of Herod. Joseph didn't organize a militia of sympathetic Bethlehemites. He didn't sit on a porch swing, shotgun in hand, 
daring Herod's soldiers to step onto his property. Rather, he ran away. It's too bad our contemporary response uh, based so much on the honor culture of our forebears is what it is. It's too bad that we have such a hard time seeing how brave St. Joseph and Our Lady were to pick up their child, the Christ child, and to retreat to an unfamiliar place, to sojourn without knowing who, if anyone, would help them, or how they'd survive, but only knowing that it was God's will that they go. In truth, sometimes the bravest action, the action God desires for us, is flight. Despite that Monty Python joke, Sometimes run away is indeed the most valiant battle cry. Too often we hear on the news, or even from personal acquaintances, stories of battered women and men who are frightened to run away. The tyranny of whose Herod-like spouses has instilled a degree of fear which immobilizes. We all hear far too often similar stories of refugees facing similar situations in their home countries who seek only a, a peaceful place to race, rest their heads and those of their children. In those sorts of situations, the choice to flee is courageous, and it can be very difficult. Examples of courageous decisions to flee could be multiplied, multiplied beyond battered spouses and refugees, but it happen, happens every day. Most of us, though, I suspect not all, have been fortunate enough to be spared extraordinary situations like these. Even so, most of us find ourselves in situations where a brief retreat of our own, a brief sojourn in Egypt, as it were, is necessary. Perhaps the most common case I've seen among my friends and acquaintances, and indeed in myself, is the need for spiritual retreat. So many of us these days are stressed to the brink all the time, and I don't think our current reality with the pandemic has made anything any better. Uh, the more I hear people saying, uh, well, what projects have you accomplished during uh, this free time that you have during the pandemic? How have you bettered myself, bettered yourself? Um, I want to tell them to go and find something else to do than shame people who've just been treading water. We're all at the end of our ropes, uh, spiritually and emotionally. And in these situations, the best thing to do sometimes is to retreat to a place of calm and of prayer. Of course, there has to be a balance maintained in this regard. We can't engage in avoidance or laziness, but the overworked, overstressed person today must permit herself or himself periods of quiet and calm and reflection in the midst of what would ordinarily be a busy life and at this time can be an overwhelming life in order to maintain a good and gracious disposition and, more importantly than that, uh, to find some sense of peace and meaning in all those places in which we live and move and have our being. I used to take retreats at monasteries, and it was a wonderful thing. Now, in the age of COVID, a spiritually edifying book and a cup of coffee or tea in my living room is uh, a pretty good substitute. Uh, 
uh, albeit less than ideal. Some people go out into the woods or down to the beach. Uh, the important thing is that we give ourselves a little time to flee, if at all possible, from the terrible non-stop rush of things, in order to spend quality time with God on God's terms. And just like the Holy Family on their own retreat, our retreat may present itself as the context for a certain kind of peril. Perhaps it will not be the peril of not knowing how we are going to survive, but rather the danger that when we do quiet down and listen to God for a while, he might demand something new and different from us. He might make it clear that his will for us is a radically different course in life. Too often we subconsciously avoid listening to God because this is a very real possibility. But like the Holy Family, and like all those who flee uh, trying and sometimes terrible situations for the good, we must approach our own flight, our own retreat, with courage and with faith that God's will is always to the good. And we can take heart in the fact that however treacherous that path may seem, God makes it safe for his people. God told the prophet Jeremiah I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. God will do the same for us if only we let him. If we only trust him to make the path smooth. If only we determine to flee to him when he calls us home to himself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was there. On the third day he rose again, and accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others.
Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through, your, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Son Jesus Christ to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to be upon his children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your holy gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in the sacrament that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified through the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, 
and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Blessed Mary, the Virgin, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the Church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. To take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, gifts of God for the people of God. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people, at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all, we thank you for gathering us as your people. We call to remembrance the many times we have been fed at your table, and we lament our distance now. 
Be present, Lord Jesus, as you are present with your disciples. Be known to us in the breaking of the bread. And may your Holy Spirit sustain us and all your church until we can gather together again. We ask this for the sake of your love. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.